Derek Carr is set to become a free agent, and we're going to talk about how that could impact the Chicago Bears and their trade for the number one overall pick. We're going to get into that. We're also going to talk about Justin Fields and his comments on T. Higgins. We're also going to look at some of the more questionable decisions made by Ryan Poles in his first offseason as the Chicago Bears GM. We're going to get into all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. All right, Bears fans. So before we get into it, you guys know I got to be a little petty. Robert Quinn, who we traded to uh, <laughs> to the uh, Philadelphia Eagles, uh, th- the Bears won that trade. When you look at, th- at that, um, he, he, he the most snaps he played for them in the regular season was 22. Uh, he only had two regular season tackles. He only played 10 snaps in the Super Bowl, and we're talking about some of the things. I know everybody's, you know, questioning the, the Chase Claypool trade. The Bears won that trade, at least, right? We we won that trade for sure. Now, I know Robert Quinn wasn't fully healthy, and we'll see what he does uh, in, in further seasons with the Philadelphia Eagles, and shout out to him for being able to make a Super Bowl. Uh, but, you know, I got to be petty on that one. And on a less petty note, former Bears head coach that, uh, you know, we were just all over, Matt Nagy on the championship-winning team, Kansas City Chiefs. By the way, shout out to the Kansas City Chiefs for – winning uh, the Super Bowl and what was one of the better Super Bowls of recent memory and uh, a, a game that I had a lot of fun in watching and hopefully you guys did too um, but now all eyes are on the Chicago Bears as we gear up to go towards free agency the Bears are going to have the most money we can start seeing some activity pick up towards the end of March around trades things like that it's going to be a fun offseason for the Chicago Bears and one of the things that could impact how fun that offseason is is Derek Carr now so Derek Carr was almost on his way uh, to the Saints to become their new quarterback he used his no trade clause to veto that he's now expected to be cut and he will be going into free agency and the and the reason why this may impact the Chicago Bears and the, and what they get back for that number one overall pick is because you, you look at it could the Texans or the Colts decide to just go after Derek Carr who is just a free agent meaning that you don't have to give up any capital it's just at the point of of your money, your cap space to give up for Derek Carr. So could they do that? Um, You know, there's some questions on if they would do. Derek Carr has his own questions around him, but it could possibly be, um, you know, that 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 could impact that top fix. So we'll see. And also teams could just wait. Um, They they could go after Derek Carr, you know, if they do miss out on that trade for the number one overall pick with the Chicago Bears. But considering that free agency comes before the NFL draft, we could see it go the other way around. We could see a team if they get Derek Carr, decide to just bow out of the quarterback negotiations uh, when it comes to to the Chicago Bears and that number one overall pick. So I, I'm looking at this, and am I am I worried about it? For some reason, I'm not worried too much about it. Now, maybe that's just overconfidence on my part, which it could absolutely be. But I'm looking at this and saying, like, uh, yes, Derek Carr is, uh, you know, what he's done in the in the NFL. You can't overlook. But he's 31 years old. Do you still want to bet on your future? We could see a team theoretically maybe go after Derek Carr and still try to trade for the Bears' number one overall pick so they can get their quarterback of the future and then maybe have Derek Carr there for a little while to um to kind of offset that growth there. Derek Carr has not had a season passing less than 3,000 yards in his NFL career, even just last season, um, passing for uh, 3,522 yards. Uh, for 24 touchdowns and only 14 interceptions. So it's not like Derek Carr is a terrible quarterback or some or a quarterback that's just ha- has not been able to be productive even after passing the age of 30. He very well could be a target for teams. So, you know, I don't want to overlook or overshadow that, you know, but it, it could potentially pay, play a part in what the Chicago Bears end up getting back or a team deciding to go into those negotiations. But the way that I see it is this. If you're trying to get your franchise quarterback for the future, you're still going to want that number one overall pick. You may still try to sign a Derek Carr so you can have a solid starting quarterback now while you build up that 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 younger quarterback. So I'm not necessarily saying that it's for sure going to be this huge thing that impacts the Chicago Bears and, their, and the, the value or the Colts or the Texans going after that number one overall pick, but it could be. And I think I'd be remiss if I did not at least speak on that a little bit. You can let me know your thoughts on it down below. Question of the day, do you think that Derek Carr being involved in, in well, now being a free agent or set to be a free agent, does it take the Colts or the Texans out of the running for trying to get the Bears number one overall pick? Let me know what you guys think on that one down below. If you're on the YouTube side, you can also email or text or call if you're on the podcast side, and we'll get to the number of that at the end of the show. Moving on, Justin Fields was asked about T. Higgins. Now, I know a lot of Bears fans have now, like, 
we, we constantly hear this talk about T. Higgins. Let's be clear here. And I want to I want to just point this. In, and again, realism. I try it in everything that I do in podcasts. And it's good to speculate all things like that. But we also want to have realism. There's been no single shred of actual evidence that the Bears are going to be trying to make a move for T. Higgins. Even T. Higgins himself has already said that he wants to remain in Cincinnati for a long time. But because this is the NFL, because this is sports, anything is possible. And Justin Fields was asked about that. And he said this. This would be awesome. A great player, great size, great receiver, and he's just really smooth. Of course, the things that he can do on the outside with the jump balls, route running, he's an awesome player for sure. And I know and I understand Bears fans, and I've even, like I said, I've done it here. We've done it, C-Dub, Bobby. We've all talked about the possibility of adding T. Higgins to the Chicago Bears team. And I've also told you guys, I I really do think the Bears aren't going to do much at that wide receiver position. I don't think we're going to make a bunch of big moves. At that receiver position, I think we're going to be focused on the trenches, getting that offensive line um, better, and then really being able to evaluate not only Justin Fields as a passer, but the receivers we already have under uh, on, on the roster going into next year. So, like I said, anything's possible. So, you do want to spend a little time talking about it because if it does happen, at least we got our thoughts on it here. But um, it's good to see that Justin Fields is aware. And, you know, Justin Fields speaking out on things and being asked about things. And over the course of every interview I've seen from him over the Super Bowl, uh, uh, time period over the last week it's just been great like he's a clear leader he clearly has his mindset and he understands football and he wants this Bears team to be successful and more importantly he wants to be the reason and a huge part of that Chicago Bears success he's up up to the test and he's shown that and he continues to show that and I have faith in what Justin Fields is going to be in regardless of the weapons we do add or don't add for Justin Fields in this offseason I definitely think that Justin Fields, we're going to see him as an improved passer. Hopefully, maybe that's hope. And I think we're going to see that improved offensive line be able to give him more time to develop as a passer. Now, one of the things that are going to help Justin Fields evolve as a passer is the line. And so Garrett Bradbury is definitely a player that the Bears could target in free agency. When you look at him coming off, has some injury concerns around him. Uh, He was a former, I think, 32 overall pick in the draft. And this is a player that he had a pretty solid season. Now, his season did come to an end. Um, because of, uh, uh, of of injury, I think he didn't. He missed like the last three games of the season. But it could be a, a player that he's coming off his rookie contract. This could be a player that the Bears do go over and get. He did suffer injury in Week 13. Uh, he missed the last five games of the season, actually. So there you go. Uh, and so you know we'll see. Um, he's had some up and down play. He had some really uh 12 solid games before he went down with injury, and that could be a player again. We know Ryan Poles likes his prove it deals. And you look at Garrett uh, Bradbury as a player that absolutely, ju- uh, Justin Fields, Ryan Poles could go after on, on that type of deal, give a prove a deal, um, still get some money in that one year, maybe a two-year contract. Again, not necessarily anything or a player that I'm saying the Bears should go after on day one or even spend you know a huge ton of money on, but he could be a prospect that the Chicago Bears could look at as they look to improve that offensive line and that center position especially as well, especially if Lucas Packers does not come back, which we've kind of already talked about some of that on the show. Now, before we end the show today, and I know I've, I've we've been talking, I've said how this upcoming offseason is not only the most important offseason, maybe in Ryan Poe's tenure. Like when you look at what all he can set up and how he can set up the Bears' future, trading that number one overall pick, what do you get back in current assets, future assets, having the most cap space uh, and, 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 and money available in free agency in this offseason. This is going to be a huge offseason that could really set the Bears up for their next three, five years, maybe more depending on what happens. But we want to take a look at and evaluate some of the more questionable moves um, by uh, Ryan Poles in his first offseason in running the Chicago Bears. And the first one that a lot of people bring up our very own C-Dub, very monitor to this player, and that's George Pickens, right? Every time that George Pickens almost makes a big play, you hear about it in Bears Nation. And the Bears could have still had um, Jaquan Brisker. If they could have just drafted George Pickens instead of uh, of, of, of Ky- uh, Ty- Kyler there, Kyler Gordon. But the question is, like, I, I, and I think we all expected the Bears to go wide receiver at that pick, right? At least, let me not say speak for everyone, at least me and I think C-Dub, Bobby, we all kind of looked at wide receiver prospects around that time. And the fact that George Pickens was on the board and we decided to go in a different route, um, it you know, it, it raises some questions. And again, some, some of these moves are, are questions, not necessarily. Kyler Gordon, especially how he came over in the back half of the season, showed at least the flashes that we want to see. But George Pickens showed flashes as well. 
um, over 800 yards receiving this season. Um, and, you know, so so it, the question remains around that 21 years old, he could have been somebody that came in, offered a big target, paired with Darnell Mooney. We didn't wouldn't have to tra- had trade for Chase Claypool. A lot of the woulda, coulda, shoulda there. Let me know. What do you guys think? Do you think that the decision of not, of going with Kyler Gordon over George Pickens, do you think that that was the right decision now, having a season of hindsight in place? Let me know what you guys think. I still think when you look at Kyler Gordon, the way that he talked, trying to improve the defense, get back to the monsters of the midway, I'm kind of iffy. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in the middle, right? I'm not necessarily saying or that, hey, we should have drafted Pickens. I'm not necessarily against Kyler Gordon, but it is something to look at and say, hey, this could have went a different route. And if that would have went a different route, how would that affect the next move we're going to talk about? And that's the trade for Chase Claypool. Now, let me be clear here. It's way too early. We didn't get to see enough of Chase Claypool to really even try to evaluate how you how he is on this team. Uh, on this team. I mean, really, we only got 14 receptions from Chase Claypool for 140 yards for the 32 overall pick. So it's enough there to maybe question and if that was the right move or if that was a questionable move for Ryan Poles. But I think we're going to see that payoff hugely. Now, I did say before, we could have drafted George Pickens with the 52nd overall pick, and then we wouldn't have had to made that, that move for Chase Claypool. And then we could have what is essentially another first round pick in our second round pick that we gave up for Chase Claypool. But at the end of the day, it's this like you, 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 you can't, everything can't be in hindsight, right? You make the decisions in the moment and Kyler Gordon has huge upside. Um, but, and when you look at this, this move for Chase Claypool, yes, in the first year, it doesn't look the best, but we already know uh, uh, we didn't pass a lot. We didn't really get to take a look at him. He immediately came in trying to learn the, the playbook and then was thrust into the number one wide receiver mo- uh, role when Darnell Mooney went down. So we really didn't get to look at what we have planned and really to integrate him in the offense. How Luke Getze integrates him in the offense this offseason is going to be hugely telling for if this deal was ultimately a win or lose for Poles and the Chicago Bears. But it is one to look at. Another questionable one is Velius Jones. And so with him, I, you, you guys know, we named him Dropsy Jones here. He had more, so many drops in different situations. Uh, he did have a big play. Uh, he had a big touchdown. He's shown a little bit of, of that, you know, a little bit of the, the potential that we saw in him. The, the biggest questions around him is, is just the age, right? Came in as an older rookie. How much do we really expect and can expect him to develop? So it makes it a little bit questionable there. But when you look at where they drafted Matt, when you look at the fact that Yes, he failed pr- to produce much, but maybe let's hope that it was just, you know, a, a, a rookie season. Let's see how he does in a sophomore season. And if he bounces back, it could not. But at least right now, definitely deserves a spot on some of the more questionable moves by Ryan Post. The next one up is a lot of the proven and veteran deals. When you look at Byron Pringle, when you look at um, Lucas Patrick, these are all uh, uh, al and Muhammad. These are all guys that are kind of, uh, I, I, I just, I don't necessarily Think that he made the best decisions in him again. It's hindsight. Again, this team had had a deficit of talent overall. Uh, but Lucas Patrick definitely is one that I, because of how injured he was and the fact that we never really got to see him in that role. Byron Pringle came in, said all the right things, and it and it never really translated to on the field. And uh, so you know that's some of the questions that I had. Uh, we've seen Al Quad and Muhammad like he's a rotational pass rusher. I think at best. Um, but you know, and but he was on a depleted defensive line as well, so it's kind of hard to evaluate. But at least right now, some of those veteran deals that he gave up didn't really work out in the best way. And then lastly, the fact that we even let almost missed out on what we had in Tevin Jenkins. Like when you just look at some of the and, and Ryan to his credit, Ryan Pose did come out and say, We want Tevin on this team, we want him to be here when all those trade rumors came, and you know, he worked himself into being in, into that starter, and he was one of our best. Uh, offensive lineman, if not the best offensive lineman that we had. So, you know, it, but just the fact that it was almost right, that, 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 that it was that almost glim- glimmer of, you know, the trade talk around Tevin Jenkins and us wondering if he was going to be here, things like that. The fact that we even started Michael Schofield over him initially. Um, so, you know, all that plays a part in it. But at the end of the day, at least we did hold on to Tevin Jenkins here. This would definitely be a loss if we ended up moving on from him and he showed what he showed for us for another team. So it's good that we have him here. And as we look to build that offensive line, it's good that he is still here and we have him and Braxton Jones as some pieces there on that offensive line. But you guys can let me know down below. Did I miss anything? What do you think were some of the bigger, bigger question marks as far as deals that Ryan Pose did or did not make um, in that um, in his first offseason leading the Chicago Bears as we go into the next offseason and seeing what he can do for the Bears and set them up this offseason 
we already talked about it. Like I said, I had already an episode on the best things that Ryan Poles has done, but I wanted to be fair, talk about some of the more questionable moves, but that is it for today's episode of Chicago Bears Central. You can follow the show at Shy Bears uh, Central on every social media platform. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, Chicago Bears Central at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message or voicemail for our Friday mailbag episodes, the number to do so, 773-242-9336. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related because of you guys, like I liked in every episode on. Bear down. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Break, break, media. media.